Do you know how to trap a predator and what to do once you've got it? I'm Sam and I'm a Provident Prepper. Living on a homestead can be challenging at times and the smell of skunk is highly annoying, but more importantly, they pose a dangerous threat to the chickens that we have. In this video, we'll show you how to catch and release those predators who decide to take up residence on your property. When you live in the country, you get all kinds of fun opportunities, including catching a skunk. We often can smell skunks, but we knew we had a problem when we had a chicken that had died that got dug up and dragged over to the culvert. In addition to the chicken, there were some baby bunnies that had died that also got dug up and you can see some of their nesting material. We knew we just needed to get this taken care of. The skunk sealed its fate when it messed with my garden. I had gone out and planted some lettuce seedlings underneath the shade cloth so that I could grow some lettuce outdoors even during the warm weather. I planted them and then the next day when I went out, they were gone, like literally gone. And so I replanted with another batch and the next morning, they were gone again, and I knew we had a problem and it had to be dealt with. We have a live trap that we've used many different times to capture all kinds of critters in our yard, and that is our choice. Whenever possible, we wanna use a live trap. So we begin by washing the trap to remove any odors that might be in it. All right, so this is an example of a live trap. Um, now, depending on the animal that you wanna catch, um, you're going to use different kinds of bait. For example, um, how we were trying to catch a skunk. Uh, you can use things like um, meat of some sort. You can use eggs. Um, there's a variety of uh, different things that you can use. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to put the eggs in the bottom of the trap. Um, now, the, the action on this trap uh, is in the back. So for... Uh, this particular trap, that's where you're going to want the eggs. Uh, depending on the trap, it might be different. Um, while this door is up, you're going to want to pull forward the mechanism. Um, should be a latch of some sort that keeps this trap open. And once, I just did it myself, but once this, um, once this gets stepped on back here, See if I can pull it down. It releases that uh, that door. So we're gonna pull that forward and put it wherever we want it to be. And in this case, we're gonna put the trap in front of where the hole where the skunk lives. And the best bait for catching skunks, we knew that the skunk in our yard liked the chicken eggs. And so that's the bait that we decided to use. We put three eggs in there and broke one of them open just to make sure that there was some good smell. But chicken eggs, crispy bacon, cat food, chicken or turkey, canned tuna, peanut butter on bread, and even marshmallows will work. But any meat-based oily foods that have a strong odor will attract a skunk. Skunks are going to be most active in the early morning and in the evening. They don't want to be out during the light of the day if possible. However, during cold weather, they may be out any time of day. Catching the skunk was the easy part. So we've got it, and now what? Trying to dispose of a skunk in a live trap, it's a terrifying proposition. It definitely is, but it turned out to be kind of a fun experience. Skunks aren't necessarily a bad creature. We just can't have them on our homestead. And as you can see, our friends have pet skunks, and they can be delightful. Other side, we did have an experience where our children went out to collect the eggs out of the chicken coop, and Kenny's last words were, oh look, what a cute fluffy tail, before coming running into the house, smelling like skunk. We want to watch out for the spray, the claws, and the teeth. Skunks can spray accurately for several feet. Usually, a skunk will need to visualize its target in order to spray, so I would hide from the skunk. This skunk was not as fortunate as the one that we just recently caught. 
This one was in our chicken coop mutilating chickens and trying to get the eggs from inside of them. Sometimes that's a really hard judgment call to make. This skunk was very dangerous and we could not risk trapping it and releasing it. And quite frankly, it was so mean, I'm not sure that it should have been released into the wild. When I looked into the eyes of this cute little critter, we knew that he needed an opportunity to live and that we were gonna risk relocating him to the nearby mountains. It's important to know your enemy. So the signs of an impending spray, the skunk will turn its back and lift its tail. It'll stamp its front paws or appear to be agitated or start hissing. If any of that's going on, it's time for you to back away and let the skunk calm down. We started by pulling the truck as close to the trap as we could without irritating the skunk. We then lined the bed with plastic just in case we had an issue. We then put another piece of plastic over the trap and Sam was able to grab the handle through the plastic and lift that into the truck. We then wrapped the black plastic over the top and we were ready to go. We let the boys drive in the truck with the skunk and Jonathan and I followed behind them in another vehicle just so that we could watch and make sure nothing blew out or anything on our trip up to the mountain. But we were incredibly excited when we made it the entire trip and that skunk had not sprayed. Sam had rigged the trap so that he could open it using a fishing line from quite a distance away. However, that failed. He had to go up close and untangle the line and pull it open significantly closer than what he had originally intended. It took a few moments for the skunk to realize that it had been set free, but then it made its way out of the cage. And we were so excited to watch this beautiful skunk run free and none of us had been sprayed. If you do get sprayed, you might want to try scrubbing with a mixture of one quart, 3% hydrogen peroxide with one half cup baking soda and one teaspoon of dish soap mixed together. Let it sit on your skin for five minutes and then rinse it well. You could also try soaking in a warm bath with two to four cups of baking soda in it. If the odor persists, rinse in a strong vinegar solution and wash your clothes in laundry soap that has baking soda in it, then dry outside. Now, when Kenny had said, oh, look what a cute little fluffy tail, let me tell you, those clothes never came clean and they ended up having to be thrown away. In the book, Curious George, he bathes in tomato juice and he smells better. It doesn't really work. Tomato juice, oatmeal, and beer baths just don't help. If you look in the description to this video, We've provided you with a few links of some commercial options that you have to help get rid of the skunk odor. What a relief and what a celebration we had because nobody got sprayed. We smelled the sweet smell of success. <laughs> That's so much better than the alternative. We invite you to visit the Provident Prepper and read more in our post, How to Safely Catch a Skunk Without Getting Sprayed. In that post, we also talk about how to protect your chickens from predators because on our homestead the chickens are so valuable we really take extra precautions to make sure that they're protected. In our video Survival Food Forest we talk about how we let our chickens free range in a fenced-in orchard and have them do all the work. They fertilize the trees, they take care of the bugs and the weeds and it is just an incredible system. And then back in April we filmed a little tour of our prepper homestead and it was kind of a fun video. You might be interested in watching that. Check them out. I've been sprayed by a skunk before and I can honestly say that it is not an experience that I want to repeat. And now for the question of the day. What do you do to deal with the predators in your yard? Comment down below. And thanks for being part of the solution.